Today, I will cover how to administer multiple servers in SQL Server 2012 using the Central Management Server. Central Management Servers first became available in SQL Server 2008. On a Central Management Server, you can add connections to one or more SQL Servers. These SQL Server connections can be maintained in groups, which allows you to administer all the servers that are in a group at the same time. Only a SQL Server that is version 2008 or above can be designated as a central management server. You can, however, use the central management server to administer earlier versions of SQL Server. To designate a central management server, go to the Registered Servers window in Management Studio. To bring up this window, go to View, Registered Servers. In the Registered Servers window, right-click on Central Management Server and select the first option to register one. Note that the server you choose as the Central Management Server cannot be added as a member of one of the groups that it manages. So the Central Management Server cannot administer itself but it can be managed from other central management servers. So here I'm going to enter in the server I want to designate as my central management server. Now that we have a central management server created, we can add connections to the SQL servers that we want to manage. These connections can be added directly under the central management server. Or best practice is to organize your servers into groups. For example, you can create groups for production, QA, and development. Or you can create groups for SQL server versions. Another popular grouping is to group by the business group that is responsible for the server. I'll create a group called production and another one called development. Under the production folder, I can add one or more SQL servers to manage. I'll choose to manage these two servers, SQL 1 and SQL 2. If I try to register uh, this server, which is the one I chose as my central management server, if I chose to manage this one, I'll get an error. The central management server cannot manage itself. Now that I have a couple servers registered, I can perform actions on a single server. You'll see here that I'm connected to SQL 2. Or I can perform actions on all the servers under a group. And to do that, select a group. And now you'll see in the query window, we're connected to the production folder of the central management server. So any commands and actions that are executed here will go against both the SQL 1 and SQL 2 servers. Let's execute a few commands to see how it works. There is a database called testdb1 in both SQL 1 and SQL 2 servers. There's also a testdb2 that is only under SQL 1. If we try to connect to testdb2, 
we will receive an error because it does not exist under SQL 2. The database as well as any object that you reference, any tables, any procedures, any fields within the table, they all must exist on all the servers in the group. Let's connect to testDB1. And you can see here that the command executed successfully on two servers. So we're connected now to the testDB1 on both SQL 1 and SQL 2. There's a table called products that exists in both these databases. Before I execute this though, let's see what the results are when we query the products table on SQL 1 and SQL 2 separately. On SQL 1, the products table has two columns and three records. On SQL 2, the products table is exactly the same. Two columns, three records. Now if we execute this query on the central management server, in the results view, the results for both servers are returned. Also, there's an extra column that's added to show which server the result is coming from. I'm going to add an extra record to this table in SQL 1. So now on SQL 1, the products table contains four records, while on SQL 2, the products table is still three records. But if we return to the central management server and execute this query, we'll see that from SQL 1, there are four records returned, and on SQL 2, three records. We can run other queries like update, insert, delete, and it will execute on both servers. Let's run an update to change the product 300 from TV to TV stand. From the messages window, we can see that the query executed on both the SQL 1 and SQL 2 servers, and one row was affected on each of those servers. If we query the products table now, we see that the change is updated on both SQL 1 and SQL 2. The central management server also allows you to create and modify objects across multiple servers. For example, I have a store procedure on all SQL Server instances that defrags indexes. If I make a modification to that store procedure, I don't need to manually connect to each individual server and deploy the changes. I can use the central management server to deploy the change to all servers in one shot. Being able to manage multiple servers at the same time is an extremely useful tool.